Now, the next thing we have here is what's called a phase diagram. Now, it's not actually on here. Why won't it let me edit this? I was going to write it. I'll write it at the top. Actually, we have some space. Yeah, maybe right here. So this is called the phase diagram. You don't have to add it, but I'm, it's in my notes now, so you know. Throw this over here, phase diagram. And so what are the phases? Well, phases are solid, liquid, and vapor. So with this chart, you're going to be able to figure out if something is a solid, a liquid, or a vapor. And this one specifically is for water. So I am going to write that on here as well. This is water. Now, how do I know it's water? I know a couple of reasons. One, the shape of it. Water is pretty unique. But also, this is this 101.3. That's our normal atmospheric pressure right now. So that's the normal pressure in the world. All right. So that's kind of our standard pressure. So I'm going to add that over here as well. So standard pressure meaning what we're experiencing right now um atmospheric pressure wise is this 101.3 kpa so you go outside you're like oh air feels great it feels normal it doesn't feel like anything that's 101.3 right if you go to the top of a mountain it's going to be lower air pressure all right how is your body going to react to that well if it's a really high mountain you're not going to be able to um you know have your catch your breath as easily right you go for a run there's not enough air, they say, up there. Well, there is air. It's just thinner, so you're not getting as much oxygen. So at sea level, we're at 101.3. Now, this changes a little bit based on the weather. That's why weather people are super concerned with the uh, air pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you can actually determine if some kind of weather storms and, and changes in weather are coming based on how the pressure is changing, which is kind of interesting. But... If you're really interested in that, oceanography is the class for you because they go into it in a lot more detail um, when they talk about like low pressure and high pressure fronts and that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, let's assume that we're just at sea level. It's a nice, clear day. Everything's normal. All right. So if you take a look at this, this is the normal standard pressure. And if you go down, this is zero. So what this dot is showing us is on a normal day, normal pressure, when the temperature is zero, this line intersects right here. And this line represents the phase change between, let's move some things over, the solid and liquid. And again, this is water, right? So the line represents the freezing point of water. All right, and the normal freezing point is gonna be right on that line. And an interesting thing is, that's also the normal melting point. So zero degrees Celsius is when water freezes and water melts. Now you're like, how can it be the same? If it's, if you're an ice cube, pretend you're an ice cube, all right, and you're in a freezer, all right? So you're an ice cube, you're in the freezer, everything's cool, right? Get it? Everything's cool? All right, so we take you out of that freezer, we put you on the counter, all right? Now you're on the counter, the room around you is warmer, you're going to absorb that energy. So you're going to increase your energy, all right? So your energy is going to go up. Your temperature is going to go up because in the freezer, maybe it's negative five degrees Celsius, all right? So you're an ice cube. You're getting more and more energy. Your temperature is going up. You're up, all right, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. So now you're a cooler, you're a warmer ice cube. You're getting up to zero. Once you hit zero, because you're still absorbing energy from the room around you, that's going to trigger this change in state which is going to make you go from that ice cube into starting to melt. All right, so you're going to go and melt, and then you'll become a liquid, and then your temperature can increase to room temperature as you're kind of going through there. Now, the opposite's true when you're making ice. So you take some water, you put it in an ice tray, you put it in the freezer. The freezer is absorbing your energy as water. So you're going from maybe 5 degrees Celsius down to 4, to 3, to 2, to 1, to 0. Once you hit 0, then you're losing this energy and that's causing a reaction where you start to form this crystal of ice and you then you basically freeze and so that's kind of what's happening here now if you're on the line that means that you would basically be freezing and melting at the same rate so if you had a glass of water and you had some ice in it 
if you were on this line, what would happen is the amount of ice and water in that container wouldn't change. So it's almost like it would always stay the same, like three ice cubes and then some water, all right? It would always be the same there. There wouldn't be, a, you know, eventually it wouldn't freeze and you'd have more ice, it wouldn't melt and you'd have less ice. It would just be this constant equilibrium where if a little bit of ice melted, a little bit of water froze and it just kind of all worked together and it all stayed the same. So that's what's happening on these lines there. It's, it's called equilibrium, all right? Now, let's say we're going from one line side, one side of the line to the other. So if you start on solid and you go to liquid, that's something we already talked about, right? So we're gonna be melting. So if you go from the solid side over here, you go over to the liquid side, you're melting. If you do the opposite, you're freezing. You go from the liquid side to the solid side, then you're freezing. And you can see the colors make sense too, right? Red meaning that it's heating up because it's melting. Freezing, it's getting colder, it's becoming a solid. All right, so that's all about just this line right here. Now let's take a look at this line segment over here where we're gonna go from B to D. So we'll go up here. Um, so we're liquid right now. And then if we cross this line, we're gonna go into vapor territory. So we're gonna become vapor, all right? And to do that, we have to vaporize or go through vaporization. So we go from a liquid to a vapor. And if we do the opposite, we're gonna go from a vapor back to a liquid, we're gonna condense, all right? Now this happens at 100 degrees. So it's the same as what we saw before. So if you're at 99 degrees and you keep heating it up, you get to 100 degrees, you're gonna start boiling, all right? And that's vaporization. You're gonna go from a liquid to a vapor. If you do the opposite, you're at 101, go down to 100, go down to 99. That process involves condensation where you go from a vapor to a liquid. All right, so what we are showing here is basically this chart, but with the temperatures, because you can see what happens when we're not at the normal pressure. And that's where things get interesting, because now let's talk about pressure cookers. So right now, if you just put a pot on your stove with some water, you turned it on, got it to 100 degrees, it would boil, right? But if you were to put this in like an Instapot or um, some kind of pressure cooker, the pressure inside of that is gonna be higher. So maybe it's up here. And then you can see what happens. Instead of water boiling at 100 degrees, the water's gonna boil at a higher temperature, which means the food's gonna cook faster because you're gonna have liquid water at a higher temperature. And that's kind of the magic behind the pressure cooker is it keeps the water liquid at a higher temperature, makes the food cook faster. Opposite can happen too. Let's say you go to a, onto the top of a mountain, you wanna make a birthday cake for somebody, air pressure's lower there. So maybe it's down here. You start making that cake, water boils at a lower temperature. You're gonna to have to bake it longer because it's not gonna cook as fast because again, boiling water is gonna be at a lower temperature. So that's why on the back of like brownie mixes and stuff, it says, stuff like for high altitude baking, you have to change your, your instructions a little bit because the air pressure is a little bit different. And that's how this chart pretty much works. It allows us to calculate kind of like the, either the pressure or the temperature based on whatever kind of environmental um, factors or changes you wanna have in here. Okay, so we did solid to liquid and then back, liquid to vapor and then back. But we got a couple more things to do. Oh, let's label normal boiling point too. So normal boiling point is right on that dot, right on there. So we have normal melting, normal boiling. Ooh, let's talk critical point. Ooh. Critical point is this point D up here. And what happens is after you get to this point, anything above this, meaning anything above these highest numbers, so this is pressure, 22,100, and then this temperature, 374. If you have a, above that temperature or above that pressure, you can't condense it back down into a liquid. You'd have to either cool it off or lower the pressure. Um, you, you know, After that critical point, it would stay as a vapor. It has too much energy for you to compress it down into a, into a liquid, all right? So that's what the critical point represents. I just realized we didn't even label this down here. I just said this is zero and 100 but it's temperature. Let's drag that down there. Pressure, under pressure, uh, where would this go? 
because this already says pressure and KPA here. Let's just throw it over there, I guess. Feels good. Unless you guys think of a better spot for it. Um, okay, so we have a couple more things. One, we have deposition and we have sublimation, which as we saw in the last chart, are when you go from solid to gas, right? And you can see this is kind of not gonna work. So I'm gonna rotate this a little bit just to make it look a little nicer. All right, so going in this direction, it's pretty big. I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. So going from vapor to solid is deposition like we saw before. And then going from sublimation The other way, all right, so we're going solid to vapor, that's sublimation, and then vapor to solid, that is deposition. So we have those right there, which is awesome. All right, the last one, probably the most interesting. Remember how on this line I said, if you had a glass of water with ice in it, the ice would just always be there and the water would be there in the same equilibrium, like the same amounts of each of them. If you did that on this dot down here, all three would exist in equilibrium. So imagine this a closed container, all right, so like a closed flask, and at the bottom of it, you have water, and then kind of where the water gets up to, maybe it's it's ice, and then above it, you can see condensation, because you can see kind of like this, this, this kind of like fogginess that you kind of represent, like especially when wearing a mask, you, your glasses fog up, that kind of a thing. So what's happening in there is all three are existing at the same time. So you're getting all three states exact existing at the same time, which is pretty interesting, and that's what's called the triple point, and that's where they all three come together there. Okay, so that's the phase diagram. So as you can see, we're going through solids, liquids, and gases, solids, liquids, and gases, solids, liquids, and gases. So this whole chapter is really kind of increasing our vocabulary with and our understanding of the differences between solids, liquids, and gases and how to go between them, all right? Now, this is useful and it really helps us kind of visualize what's happening to go from